welcome back to our YouTube channel and welcome to Joyce University. Again, this is a part of my lecture series for the subject, the teacher, and the curriculum. Today, I'll be discussing the different models of curriculum development process. And the first model that we'll be discussing is Ralph Tyler's model. Ralph Tyler wrote his ideas in the book, Basic Principles of Curriculum Instruction. And this book was made primarily for his students to be given ideas as regards the principles to be followed in curriculum making. And Ralph Tyler model is always considered to be one of the first models and it was and still is a highly simple model because it merely contains four different steps. Ralph Tyler model also known as Tyler's Rational, emphasizes the planning stage and the importance of planning in creating a certain curriculum. And other than that, Tyler's model is deductive or from top to bottom, from general to specific, because for Tyler, the administrators should be the one to design the curriculum and that the teachers should be the implementers of such curriculum. Now, he posited four fundamental principles. The first principle is determine the school's purposes or objectives or outcomes. And this answers the question, what education purposes should schools seek to attain? So what does the school want with his graduates? What kind of graduates does the school desire for his students? And in our own context, we term this one institutional outcomes. And our institutional outcomes reflect the, kind, the characteristics of the ideal graduates. And for Tyler, that's the first thing that you have to look into. The institutional outcomes or the school's purposes. The second one, identify educational experience related to the purpose. And it actually, it should actually answer the question, what educational experience can be provided that are likely to attain this purpose? So if this is my objective, what activities should I craft so that I may be able to attain such objective? If one of the purposes of the school is to produce students who are, um, who are research-oriented, then the second principle is, what activities should the school do so that it could ensure that the students would develop or would become research-oriented students? So the second principles would be talking about the activities that you have to do, the school has to implement so that the outcomes will be achieved. The third one is organize the experience. Organize the educational experience. It should answer the question, how can these educational experiences be effectively organized? Should it start with the simplest task down to the more complicated ones? Are the activities to be given to the students to fulfill such outcomes are in organized fashion or orderly fashion or what? And the last one is to evaluate the purposes. How can we determine whether these purposes are being attained or not? What evaluative tool should the school use so that it may be able to assess whether the outcomes are achieved or not at the end of the period? So these are the different principles that Tyler um, had posited. Now let's look into each principle closer. The principle one, first principle rather, is determining the objectives of the school or of the class. So in other words, we have to focus on the question, what do the students need to do in order to be successful? And that could be done, that could be measured if these students were a are able to achieve your outcomes or objectives at the end of the period. That is why each subject has natural objectives and this is what you call course outcomes and each objective are indicators as well indicator as well of mastery all objectives 
need to be consistent with the philosophy, with the vision, with the mission of the schools, and with the institutional outcomes. And this institutional outcome should be reflected in the course or topic outcomes. So we have to start with institutional outcomes. And from the institutional outcomes, we create course outcomes. And from the course outcomes, we create topic learning outcomes. That is why, uh, let's have this one as an example. One of our university's institutional outcomes is to produce graduates who are critical thinkers. That is the outcome that the school wants for the students. So the teachers in our school, regardless of the subject, regardless of the course, should make sure to develop students' critical and creative thinking skill. All right? So because the, the outcome is for the school to develop critical thinkers among the students, then the teachers and everyone in the teaching and learning process should make sure to fulfill such outcome. And what would the teacher do? Create activities that would develop this student's critical and creative thinking skill. Now, the second one is developing the learning experience that help the students to achieve the step one, the, the learning outcome. And this could be the learning activities to be done to achieve the outcome. So, for example, if our students need to be critical thinkers, like what I said a while back, then the teacher should craft strategies to cater to students' higher order thinking skills. So give the students activities to intellectually argue with their classmates, to solve cases relevant to their fields, to apply good reasoning skills, to debate, to apply higher order thinking skills. So to synthesize, to apply, to analyze. Because that is the outcome of my school. And that outcome, and that activity rather, is really aligned to my outcome. So my outcome, the school's outcome is to produce students who are critical thinkers. Then activities to be done for the school to achieve that is to give students opportunities to, to develop their higher thinking or their thinking skills. Giving activities to argue with their classmates, to um, interpret cases, to solve cases relevant to their fields, and the like. Okay, So you provide activities that would allow students to develop their critical thinking skill. And the next step is organizing the experience. So you've got to organize the, the activities. Should the teacher demonstrate first or should the students learn by doing immediately? So it could either be the teacher would demonstrate it or the teacher would do it immediately. The point here is that the teacher needs to determine a logical order of experience for the students, okay, so that they may be able to achieve what is to be achieved by them. And the last one is to evaluate the objectives. Here, the teacher now is able to assess the student's critical thinking skill. Is the school successful in developing the student's critical thinking skill? Then you've got to come up with evaluative tool, with, um, with summative assessment or formative assessment. You've got to evaluate whether the school successfully um, achieved the learning outcomes it planned for the students. Okay, that's Tyler's model. Now, Hilda Taba 's model, on the other hand, is a different story. Hilda Taba is the developer of the Taba model of learning, and this model is used to enhance the thinking skills of the students. But the main concept of this approach to curriculum development is that teachers must be involved in the development of the curriculum because teachers are in the classroom and teachers are the ones who who are with the students who mingle with the students and who teach the students then the teacher is the person who is more than capable of creating you know curriculum for them 
and the needs of the students are the forefront of the curriculum. That's why TABAS model is considered to be the grassroots model or the bottom up. It would start from the from the bottom, the teachers, and then up to administrators. Now, there are seven steps in the TABAS model of curriculum development. First, Diagnosis of learners' needs and expectations of the learners of the larger society. So for TABA, the first thing that you have to do is to diagnose the learners' needs. You have to know the needs that you have to address. You have to know the weaknesses and the strengths as well as the learning potentials and the learning styles of the students. Because if you know all those things according to TABA, it would just be very easy for teachers to craft lesson or curriculum for that matter. After looking into the learner's need, then you proceed to the formulation of the learning objectives, all right? So your objectives must be based on the needs of the students. And after which, you select now the content. And this curriculum content should match the objectives, of course. Hindi yung igagawa ka ng, ng ganitong objective, pero yung content mo pala ay iba. So you have to make sure that your content is very much relevant to the learning objective and then you organize the learning content so how are you going to teach the learning content what process would you use what method should you use would you be using the deductive method the inductive method would you be using the direct approach or the indirect approach so the organization of content are you going to follow the three i's in the introduction interaction and integration or would you be following the four a's activity, uh, analysis, application, and the like. So you've got to know the how are you going to teach the content. And the last one, you select for the learning experience or for the learning activities, for the strategies. And this strategy should be based on the learning content. And your strategies at the same time should be based on your own approach. So if your approach to teaching is student-centered, then your learning experience should be student-centered at the same time. You give them differentiated tasks. You let them do their tasks. You let them do it on their own. The next one, you have to organize the learning activities. What is the first activity should I be coming up with? Am I going to give them puzzles first? Am I going to give them motivational activities first before moving into a debate? So you have to look into that. Uh, hindi pwedeng magbigay ka ng activity ng kahit na ano sa kahit saan without analyzing its organization. And the last one according to Taba is the determination of what to evaluate and the means of doing it. So evaluative tool is very important. That is why there is a need to give assessment tool in the middle or after the discussion and that assessment activities should be guided by different rubrics. All right. That is why if the teacher gives you like a performance test that you have to um, role play a certain scenario in a story, then that task must be coupled with rubrics. And these rubrics would guide you and the teacher as regards the manner of grading your performance. So these are the seven steps in Taba's model. Okay, and the last one is Gallen Saylor and William Alexander curriculum model. So the curriculum, according to them, is a plan for providing sets of learning opportunities to achieve broad educational goals. And they actually enumerated four levels at the same time. One, you have to know your goals, your objectives, and domains. And curriculum planners, according to these two, begin by specifying the major educational goals and a specific objective that they wish to accomplish. Like when we are coming with, up with our learning plan, we always have to start with our outcomes, with our goals. What is my goal for this lesson? What do I want my students to learn after this lesson? The second, uh, the goals and the objectives and domains are identified and chosen based on the research findings, based on the accreditation and standards, and based on the views of the different stakeholders. So when you are crafting your goals or your objectives or your domains, you have to make sure that you are um, doing what is prescribed by the different accrediting agencies. Make sure that you are following 
the findings of different researches and you are integrating the views of the different stakeholders. The second one is curriculum designing. So after knowing your goals and your objectives and the domains, then you are now ready to design the curriculum. Okay, and I think I mentioned this one in the previous video. Third, you implement the curriculum. So design curriculum is now ready for the implementation and it's where you are going to put into practice whatever it is that you have planned. And the teachers here then prepare instructional plans so that the objectives will be achieved and would also be preparing appropriate teaching methods and strategies so that they may be able to attain the desired learning outcomes for the students. And the last one is the evaluation which is the last step of the curriculum model. You have to evaluate whether you have achieved uh, the objectives, whether you have succeeded in uh, giving students what they have to understand, and you have succeeded in providing students whatever they need that they have to, to look into. And in the evaluate and evaluation phase, according to Saylor and uh, Alexander, it should involve the total educational program of the school and the curriculum plan at the same time and it must also evaluate the effectiveness of instruction and the achievement of the students because um, you know students in, in instruction very good instruction equals to very good students that is why they would always say that the kind of teachers you are reflects the kind of students that you'll be producing and through the evaluation process, planners and developers can determine uh, what is to be strengthened and what is to be enhanced when it comes to the curriculum that is implemented in the school. So these are the three models of curriculum development process, um, Tyler's model, Tapas model, and uh, Sailor's and Alexander's curriculum model. So, uh, please visit your CLMS account for the activities about these different models. Goodbye. See you next time.